Hey, it's Arrow, and this is Vocal Defrag. Vocal Defragging is asking yourself the questions and then questioning the answers. It's giving yourself the opportunity to have a voice in that wild life that you're leading. But too many times we tend to depend on other people's feelings about what we should be doing, what we should not have done, and how we could be actually expanding in our own lives. But we, we depend on them to show us the way. And when there's no payoff, then we hold it against us because we made the decision to let somebody else in to help kind of shape that path. We do it all the time at our places of business. I realize it. It's a job. You're supposed to work for them. Your name's not on the building yet. And so you show up expecting them to help lead you to a higher ground. And then it doesn't have a payoff. And you hold yourself responsible. So ask the questions and question the answers. This is Vocal Defrag. By the way, I also keep a defrag journal. It's a handwritten journal where I'm doing basically the same thing. But when you write it out, when I come back into a place of study to find out where the mindset was and where it grew to, the thing is, is that it's the interpretation of the reader in that moment and not when it was being put on paper. So the vocal defrag gives you an opportunity to truly hear your emotions, to be able to listen to the pitch, volume, and tone, to find out where you are on the inside with a voice that's always so willing to speak. And that's not true either. That's not always the big thing where the voice sometimes says, nah, I ain't showing up. But we got a vocal defrag. I ain't showing up. Figure out a different plan, which is the reason why I do the journal as well. No matter what, there will be some sort of voice, be it in writing or be it a vocal defrag. Today's subject is something that I am very, very near and dear to, and that is a transition walk. I'm blessed with the opportunity to take a transition walk through this beautiful forest in South Charlotte, North Carolina, every day. Today, it's raining. It's 48 degrees. There are so many leaves on the ground, oranges and yellows and reds and browns. And, and most people would look at that as being, well, it's a transferring of seasons. Look at all that death. It's not death. What it is, it is the opportunity to warm the ground. The trees are so giving to the soils beneath them that they're warming the ground. And of course, you know, the human wants to hurry up and get out there, rake it up and get rid of it because they've got a lawn that they spend so much money on, especially when it comes to watering it. And, and you've got to keep it looking good and the leaves on top of it, it's going kill it. Why the importance of a transition walk? First of all, if you're pretty much like everybody else in the world, you can't turn off the way that you think. Do you understand how you think and why you think? And what happens during those moments where it feels like you shouldn't be thinking, but you are. And when you need to think, it's not showing up. So learning how to put yourself into the mindsets of understanding your transitions. I always look at it as being like on a hard drive on a computer where you create folders. That's what I think moods are. That's what I think mindsets will grow into is that you're listening to yourself and you're putting yourself in positions. For instance, like the writer in me has nothing to do with the person that is the journal writer in me. So in other words, I have the storyteller, he's got his own personality, and the journal writer has his own personality, versus the show prepper for the podcast has his own personality. The one that does the podcast has a personality. Kind of crazy, huh? Is it multiple personalities? Do I have a problem with that? I don't think that's what it is, but the transition walks give me an opportunity to go through those thinking patterns, to understand Understand the personality of the journal writer versus the storyteller. To understand that, look, if it's not happening, don't get angry with yourself. Ask the questions, question the answers. And of course, being out here in this forest, I'm given the opportunity to be with nature. We just saw a four-point buck just a few minutes ago. As peaceful as all can be, we walked beside each other for a little bit, and then he went back up into the trees while we continued going down the path. So these things like this allow us to kind of let go of our humanisms of sitting in front of a flat screen TV, listening to music, breaking free of anything that is digital, and to get out here in nature where the universe is constantly moving through us. Now, you may not have a forest that you walk through. You may have a nearby park, a greenway, 
You might be in a city, and anything like that is nothing but a dream away. So take a walk in the wild, outside on the city streets. Listen to the gentle roar of the traffic. There's birds everywhere. Pay attention to the birds that are around you, and learn from those birds by going home and Googling them to find out what kind of bird it is, and then try to take a spiritual walk with that bird in the way of what does a bright red cardinal represent? Hey, I saw a pigeon of three today. Does that mean anything? Is the pigeon a totem bird? Is there anything behind that kind of stuff? So when you put yourself in a position of receiving what is around you by taking a transition walk, it really does open up your head and heart in a way of saying, I am here. I am only a mustard seed inside a particular moment of now. Yesterday on my podcast, I talked about, are we spending way too much time in the future? And research has shown that, yes, we are. And the reason why is because we're trying to break free of what is now. We don't want to deal with it. It's not playing out the way that we want to. With all the different wars that are taking place, the financial crisis, the political drama, we we don't want to deal with it. So we sit back and we put ourselves in a position of facing a future. We try to design it. We try to lay it all. It's almost like a metaverse of sorts. And so, and we live there. But the problem is, is that getting back to it on a daily basis, it's almost like a dream. You can't dream the same dream twice. It can look like something that you once dreamed, but it's not the same dream. So when you take a transition walk and you put yourself in a position of being out here on a 48 degree rainy day with the leaves on the ground, it allows you to put your mind at calm. And what is calm in a world that's moving too quickly? I've heard this so many times from people saying, I'm so bored, or I'm so depressed. Have you asked yourself the questions? Why are you bored? Why are you depressed? Is it because being normal doesn't feel like that big party that you were throwing down last night? And it's like, man, it's, I've always got to be on. I've always got to be rocking. But in reality, sometimes the mind, body, and soul, it just needs to find its calm. Well, the calm can be found in the transition walk. So many different ideas and thoughts can come to you. It doesn't mean you have to act upon them, but grab your digital device, put it inside, and deal with it when you return home. For instance, like one of the things that I do as a daily writer, I have my one place that I write every single day. Been that way for 29 years. The same view of this forest every single day. Breaking free to do a transition walk, getting into the forest, allows me to step out here with the trees, who are beautiful as all can be, but but to be a part of it and to feel what it offers. Because am I really feeling the energy of the forest each morning that I write? Because there are several sheets of glass right there between the two of us. Am I receiving it or am I looking at a reflection in the window and it's that of a writer trying to fill three pages? Take a transition walk. Find your place where you can just kind of let go to locate your calm. Ask the questions, question the answers. Don't put yourself under pressure. Ask simple questions. Trust me, it'll make its way into some deeper ones and you'll start learning your boundaries of where you don't want to grow. I'm Errol, and that's Vocal Defrag.